Dell here today. We're going to be talking about this Arrow Highwayman classic 1950s style leather jacket. A little bit about Arrow. They've been making vintage style leather jackets since the 1980s. For them, they really make jackets that are from the earlier eras, from 1920s to 1960s. If it's more recent than that, they don't make it. Their arguably most popular style is the Highwayman. And that is the jacket I'll be reviewing today. They are known for using especially heavy Chrome XL front quarter horse hide while also offering quite a variety of leathers and lining options and different styles of jackets from lots of different eras. So in this video, we're going to kind of cover the iconic Arrow jacket and go into some details about the pros and cons and things you should know about when buying from Arrow. So this Highwayman is made out of a heavy Chrome XL steer hide. This leather is impregnated with waxes and oils in the Chrome XL way, and it has a really beautiful depth of color, and it's developed a lot of character over time. You know, this is a used jacket, so it's already had some break in and wear on it, and it's all the more beautiful for it. You know, the brown Chrome XLs are, in my opinion, amongst the most beautiful when it comes to depth of color right out of the box, and they really can develop this great look over time. This steer hide is heavier by weight than their flagship horse hide, but it is a little easier to move in, and I quite like the difference. Uh, the Chrome XL horse hide jackets that I had from Arrow were significantly stiffer, and uh, even with break-in <laughs> compared to this Chrome XL steer hide, which gets to one of the things with Arrow, which is there's so many options that landing on one single best option for you can be difficult, which we'll get to a little bit on later. So other things that this jacket is made out of, it's got this tweed lining, really pretty with these kind of little pips of color in there, which I quite like. The arms are lined with heavy cotton drill it's just a really hard wearing cotton weave. And while it is not slick, <laughs> it is easier to move a uh, arm through that than it would be through the tweed lining that's in the body. The ends of the sleeves have storm cuffs. These block out the wind. They form a rather tight seal around your wrist. I would say one downside of that is that it can be difficult with a watch on to be comfortable and I actually don't wear my watch whenever I have this jacket on uh, because of those storm cuffs. The back of the jacket is pretty simple. It has a mild little Western style yoke, but it doesn't have a big dip and it doesn't really strongly feel of Western vibes. And it does have side panels that can be gathered together with cinches that are at the uh, back bottom of the waist. It does also have uh, two hand warmer pockets. They are not zipped. This jacket doesn't have any internal pockets, although Arrow does make jackets with internal pockets. You could get that if you wanted. As to the construction on the jacket, it is well put together with really heavyweight thread. No surprise considering the weight of this hide and the materials that are used for the jacket. So the stitching is not perfectly straight throughout. Uh, there are no issues that I found with the stitching, no areas that are not still connected, nothing coming apart. It's functional, but not be beautifully perfect like can happen with some of the uh, Japanese and other high tier makers like Thetty. But again, to get that level of meticulous detail costs a lot more time and effort. And so it also costs a lot more money. <laughs> so I think it's a good middle ground where you get what you need and the stitch work is well done. One issue from a construction standpoint with this jacket is the zipper. And this is something that's kind of a common complaint that bears out with this jacket. So it is a relatively small zipper. It's a number five zip. And this jacket is heavy. I mean, it weighs five pounds or so. And there's no really heavy metal components adding to that weight. There are not a lot of zippers or buckles or snaps on this jacket. So the majority of the weight comes from the leather. And the zipper on this jacket failed. Now, it's not a catastrophic failure, but the pull tab on the zipper slide got ripped off by the previous person that had this jacket. Is this a huge deal? No, but it speaks to a larger kind of known issue with aero jackets, which is that they have these heavier, stiffer leathers and they use these small zippers <laughs> to be period specific. And it can cause a problem if you're not careful with pulling up that zipper 
something to be aware of with aero jackets and maybe the most common technical complaint that I hear about from their jackets is the zipper. And this jacket is a perfect example of it. Another thing to note about the construction on this jacket is that you have this really heavy hide and you have a lining material, this tweed, which is significantly less robust than that hard wearing leather. And over time, sometimes folks find that that lining wears out, especially in high wear areas like the bottom hem in the back and it will get kind of tattered back there. It can also happen against the back of the neck. And I think this is something just to take in stride, honestly. Some people complain about it, but if you can get 10 or 15 years of wear out of a lining and then have it replaced or uh, covered up, I don't think that's so bad. I mean, think about the maintenance we do on boots and shoes and the high wear areas like the heels that might need to be replaced or capped. And just maintaining a heavy duty garment over time seems like a reasonable choice. Quick interruption to say, if you like this video, could you push the like button? If you like this type of content, would love it if you subscribed. It's what I do all the time. Let's get back to it. Let's talk about sizing, fit, comfort. So I am 5'9". I weigh 175 pounds and I have a just over 40 inch chest. I take a size 40 in almost everything. And in this jacket, the highway men, I took the standard sizing advice that I see most people give, which is to size down two full sizes. So this is a size 36 on me and it fits like a sort of short 40 in most kind of modern sizing. And this gets to one of the things with Aero that can be difficult, which is that they build jackets to the standards of the era that they are trying to replicate. And this is a 1950s style jacket. And in the 1950s, oversized was in. <laughs> and so this is a really big jacket if you go off the tag size. And if I bought a 40 in this jacket instead of a 36, I would be swimming in it. Uh, some people just size down one and that would make for a reasonable size, I think, too. Uh, I could wear beefier layers underneath it and it would be slightly longer, but I'm really happy with the fit sizing down too. With the way that I typically wear jackets and garments, this seems to be the fit for me. Now, the complaint that I see about sizing with this particular jacket, and it feels like people have trouble unlocking this, and there's been so much discussion about this, but I think just sizing down two is best for most people. And I've seen a lot of folks wearing them and it seems like people feel like there's too much material at the back or there's other issues with it, but you need to have a little space on the back or you won't be able to move in it. So it's okay if it's a little bit oversized, even if you size down two, because you need to be able to move in it. And this jacket doesn't have underarm gussets or an action back. So that extra material is where the, the mobility comes from. And two, uh, some people do need to add an inch of length. And this gets to sometimes when you're buying from Aero, you just have to pay really close attention to the sizes for their stock jackets. Or if you're buying used, really pay attention to the, the sizes there. And when I say sizes, I mean the specific measurements of the jacket. This jacket has about a 24 inch length, which is great for me. And I like short jackets, as I've mentioned before, but some people might find it to be too short, especially if you're taller than 5'9". Well, heck, what do you do? <laughs> uh, you might just look for a jacket with a slightly longer back length, which they do make, uh, whether you wait for them to have one show up used or on their stock page, or if you just order a custom jacket from Arrow and specify one inch added to the length or added to the sleeves as need be, that's an easy modification from Arrow and it kind of built into their custom ordering process, which only adds maybe a hundred or $120 to the cost of the jacket, which isn't so bad. Now, once you've landed on your fit, how does the jacket wear? Well, it wears quite easily, I find. And this is interesting because I've worn a lot of different aero jackets and this is basically tied for the heaviest, but it is by far the most comfortable. And to compare it really specifically to two models that I think are similar, I had both a Premier Highwayman, which is a very slimmed up version of the standard Highwayman. So slim, in fact, that folks Typically, instead of sizing down two full sizes, they size up one size for the Premier Highwayman. 
So I had a Premier Highwayman in size 42, and all the measurements for that jacket lined up for what you would expect to work for me. But I found that with the high armholes and the slimmed up arms on that jacket, it was way too tight for me to wear comfortably for any period of time. And I really just had to let it go. I had to move that jacket on because if I had it on for more than 45 minutes, it became quite uncomfortable. And it's the kind of thing where it looked great, but ultimately if you can't wear the jacket, who cares how it looks? <laughs> so that was my first experience with the Highwayman. I did try another short and boxy style, which is the 1950s half belt. It's another really popular model. And it kind of looks similar to the Highwayman, but it is a little bit longer and a little bit narrower than the Highwayman. And it has a different pocket configuration and the back looks a little different, but it, it's in a similar vein of style. And with that model, you size down one from your standard sizing to get a modern fit. And with that jacket, it was, I don't know if it was the cut of that jacket or if it was the, the, the horse hide on this jacket, which seemed to be a particularly thick and stiff batch of the Chrome XL front quarter horse hide that they use. Perhaps this is an argument for not getting the heaviest, stiffest leather you can and trying to manage it. <laughs> but with that jacket, it did look amazing and I could not wear it for more than an hour or so before it started to become uncomfortable. And some of that with that cut too, it was the angle of the shoulders. It did feel a bit like that jacket was not evenly balanced across my shoulders and it was weighing against my neck and the edges of my shoulders and the kind of the slope of the shoulders didn't really match well to mine. And this kind of gets to a point which is with Arrow offers so many different jackets of so many different eras and they have so many different patterns and cuts and so many different leathers <laughs> that it can be kind of uh, boggling to find the jacket that both fits like you want and feels like you want. And it has taken me, maybe this is my fifth or sixth arrow to find one that I truly feel is actually comfortable and fits me properly. Now, kind of silly that I didn't just go for the traditional Arrow Highwayman first, because it turns out that that actually was the best fit for me. I think it's because so many people talk about how difficult it is to find a fit on this jacket, and maybe it just isn't. Maybe just short and boxy is good. <laughs> so, as far as the wearability, this jacket feels great. And it is easy to move around in. Yes, it has a little bit of extra material on the back, if you look at it as a static jacket but in motion, that extra material makes it quite easy to move around in. And the larger arms on this jacket make it easy to move my arms and, and have the phone to my ear and just do stuff without my arms getting tired and feeling like I'm fighting the jacket. All right, so the Highwayman, it's a comfortable wearable jacket, but what can you wear it with? How versatile is it? And so I think like many half belt styles and straight zip, non-motorcycle jackets that have a dress collar, like a lot of half belts, like my Rainbow Country Hercules. These are jackets that have a more refined or dressier starting point. And so they do look great with, you know, a dress shirt and slacks. They look great with traditional work wear, like denim and denim shirts or chambray. And they can also look good with t-shirts or Henley and jeans, but it would be really difficult to pair with the really kind of modern street style hoodie and sneakers. Might be a harder match. Maybe you could pull it off, but it is leaning a little further away from where the jacket naturally sits to pair it with those more modern street wear styles. But overall, a really versatile jacket. Let's talk about the cost and the value proposition that Arrow is offering with this Highwayman. So if you buy direct from Arrow, you're looking to likely pay between, say, $600 to $900 for this jacket. That depends on if you're buying it from their stock page or ordering custom. It depends on what the jacket is made out of. Some leathers cost more than others. This particular leather is kind of one of the standard ones, so it doesn't get an upcharge. And it also depends on the currency conversion for the pound to whatever your currency is at the time you're buying. So there's a lot of fluctuation there possible. I think that at that price, you 
get what you would expect, mostly. I, I would honestly like to see a different zipper or the option to have a more robust zipper, but uh, they are not interested in doing that. <laughs> and maybe you just have to, part of the price is that you're careful with your zipper, unlike the person that previously owned this jacket. I really think that with the number of options available and what they're offering is kind of amazing. I think that some folks would expect Aero at their price to be a grail, high-end, the best jacket ever made. It isn't that, but it is available. It's beautiful. You can find a style to fit what you want. And the, the price is, I think, quite reasonable for what you're getting. They're not the highest tier jacket. They're not the lowest tier jacket but they're accessible and available because of that. Now, one of the things that also kind of insulates you from risk in the in, regarding price for this jacket is there is a thriving used market for aero leather jackets. You can either decide to sell your jacket and likely recoup about 50% of the cost, or you can go out and buy a used one for about 50% of the price of new, whatever makes sense for you. So I do think that when you're buying from a maker that has this pool of used jackets that has a thriving market around it. It really does make it easier to give it a shot. So the math here is pretty straightforward. You know, if you wear a jacket like this a few times a week for a year, and then you're looking at a cost per wear that's around maybe eight bucks. And then if you wear it more often than that or wear it for more years than that, the, the cost per wear just keeps going down. You know, at around five years, maybe you're at 50 cents to a dollar per wear, which is a fantastic cost per wear. And so it's easy to balk at the price of something that is durable without really considering the effect of that durability on cost per wear. So the value proposition here is, is quite good. Initial thoughts on this Aero Highwayman are really positive. I really like the fit of it. I like the short and boxy nature of it. I think it's a really versatile style, and I think the leather and construction are incredibly beautiful. <laughs> I like that the, the leather is so hearty, and you know, with Chrome XL, you can get caught in the rain, you don't have to worry about it. All these are great things, and I think that for my style, I'm not really often wearing sneakers and hoodies, I do that sometimes, but you know, this is a good jacket to wear for everything up from there, and that's great. The really only negative I have to say about this jacket is is really the zipper. And I don't think it would necessarily be a problem if I have been the only owner for this jacket, but I'm not. And clearly whoever had it before me had a problem that a lot of people do, which is with the zipper durability. And I kind of wish it would be possible to get a beefier zip straight from Aero. It doesn't seem to be something they're interested in and it doesn't match up with their kind of design and aesthetic goals but I may very well get this zipper switched out for something stronger uh, if I have problems with it. That'll be something to kind of keep tabs on and I'll report back. I will be replacing the pull on this zipper slide and cleaning the zipper and putting some zipper wax on it. And I think that that will make it work a lot better, but you know, time will tell. Uh, overall, for a jacket at this price with all of the positive qualities really outweighing kind of the one big negative. Uh, I have to say, awesome jacket, really happy I have it. And kudos to Arrow for making kind of this iconic vintage style jacket that is widely available and accessible to a lot of different folks. If you're thinking about the Highwayman, give it a shot. Maybe you'll find out that short and boxy is actually for you. <laughs>